dream on. Spencer is a very special engine from the mainland. He belongs to the Duke and Duchess of Boxford. He's very fast, very shiny and very strong. He also likes to show off. The other engines didn't like that. One day, Thomas was shunting trucks at Knapford Yard. The fat controller arrived. The Duke and Duchess of Boxford are coming to show door with Spencer, he boomed. Spencer will be very tired after his long journey, so you, Thomas, must help him. Later, Spencer arrived. Thomas was still working. Take my carriages and shunt them away, Spencer huffed grandly. I will when I've shunted these trucks, tooted Thomas. But Spencer didn't like waiting. I'm faster, shinier and stronger than you, Thomas. You are just a little tank engine. This made Thomas cross. But he remembered the fat controller had told him to help. So Thomas shunted Spencer's carriages safely into the sheds. When Thomas arrived back at Tidmouth's sheds, he was very tired. Spencer was already there. Anyone can shunt trucks, wished Spencer, but you have to be very special to pull the Duke and the Duchess of Boxford. This made Thomas very cross. I'll show that bossy boiler, Thomas puffed to Percy. Tomorrow I'm going to be faster, shinier and stronger than Spencer. The next morning, Thomas had to collect trucks from the smelter's yards. When Thomas reached the main line, he decided he would go faster than Spencer. Thomas puffed faster and faster. He puffed faster than he'd ever puffed before. Thomas steamed past Emily. Slow down, Thomas, she whistled. You'll never get round the bend. Thomas slammed on his brakes. Whoa! Tooted Thomas, terrified. Luckily, he stopped just in time. Maybe I can't be faster than Spencer, he chuffed, but I can still be shinier and stronger. Later, Thomas was at the washdown. I'd like the shiniest polish ever, he tooted. Thomas was rubbed and scrubbed until he sparkled and shone. It took a very long time. Toby pulled up next to Thomas. Look, Toby, whooshed Thomas proudly. I've never been so shiny. Toby had an urgent message for Thomas. You have to shun stone at the quarry, he steamed. They're waiting for you now. So Thomas puffed quickly away. Thomas arrived at the quarry. My, said Mavis, you're the shiniest engine I've ever seen. Thomas was pleased. He puffed off proudly. Thomas's trucks were filled with stone. All his sparkle and shine had gone. Thomas was very unhappy. He steamed off with his trucks. Thomas came to Gordon's Hill. He had never puffed up it with such a heavy load. I may not be faster or shinier than Spencer, tooted Thomas, but I can still be stronger. The hill got steeper and steeper, and the stone felt heavier and heavier. Thomas's wheels started to spin. Oh no, cried Thomas. Stones tipped out of the trucks. He slid all the way to the bottom. Thomas wasn't strong enough after all. Thomas felt very, very silly. All day I've tried to be faster and shinier and stronger than Spencer, he wished, and I'm not. Thomas felt terrible. Next morning, Thomas knew what he was going to do. I don't want to be faster, shinier and stronger than Spencer anymore, he chuffed. I'm very happy to shunt trucks. 
then the fat controller arrived. There is an emergency, he boomed. The Duke of Boxford has to return to the mainland on very important business. Where are his special carriages? His carriages are right at the back of the yard, sir, puffed Thomas. But don't worry, I can shunt them to the front very quickly. Well, John Thomas, said the Fat Controller, then take them straight to Spencer. When Thomas arrived at the sheds, Spencer's boiler was still cold. You might be the fastest, shiniest and strongest engine, but you're the slowest to get fired up, Thomas tooted cheekily. Now it was Spencer's turn to feel very silly. Then the Duke arrived. Why are you not ready, Spencer? I will miss my airplane, he said sternly. Thomas, you must take me to the airport. Yes, sir, tooted Thomas. The Duke's special crest was placed on Thomas's boiler, and Thomas steamed grandly away. Thomas felt very proud as he raced to the airport. Thomas arrived just in time. Jeremy was waiting for them. The Duke was very pleased. There's nothing better than an engine you can rely on, he said. You have saved the day, Thomas. Thomas watched the Duke's plane fly away. Thomas knew he wasn't faster, shinier or stronger than Spencer, but he was certainly reliable. And that was a very useful thing to be. Thomas set sail. It was a blustery, buffety day on the island of Sodor. Edward's coal trucks creaked and cranked against the wind. Percy's mail trucks shuttled and shivered. But Thomas hardly noticed the wind at all. He puffed into Brendam docks. The mayor of Sodor had ordered a brand new sailing boat I am to take the sailing boat to the launch party, tooted Thomas excitedly. The mayor, the fat controller and Lady Hat will all see the boat go into the sea for the very first time. The boat had a tall mast and was painted bright red. It's wonderful, gasped Thomas. It's red. I should be taking it, huffed James. It's heavy. I should be taking it, wished Gordon. Cranky lowered the sailing boat onto Thomas's flatbed. It's not too heavy for me, tooted Thomas. You must wait for the engineer to lower the mast, snapped Cranky. The masts will be no trouble for me, Thomas whistled, and he raced away. Thomas puffed proudly along. The wind was strong and the boat was heavy, but not too heavy for Thomas. Thomas came to a steep hill. He chuffed hard, pulling the heavy boat. I can do it, I can do it, he puffed. And soon he reached the top. Hoorah! Thomas tooted. I did it! He felt very pleased. And he steamed on. Then Thomas met Emily. Look at my sailing boat, Emily! Thomas tooted. Don't you look grand? wished Emily. And Thomas knew he did. Thomas felt very grand as he steamed past Elizabeth. Be careful with that tall boat, she hooted. It's a very blustery day. But Thomas felt far too important to take any notice. Next, Thomas puffed towards a low bridge. Rosie was waiting at the signal. Watch out, Thomas, whistled Rosie sharply. Thomas applied his brakes and stopped. 
just in time. The mast is too tall to go under the bridge, puffed Rosie. Then I shall take another track, huffed Thomas. Thomas chuffed proudly on. Then there was trouble. He heard a loud crunch. Thomas looked up. Oh no, cried Thomas. The tall mast must have caught in the trees. Thomas couldn't move forwards or backwards, so he huffed and he chuffed, and with a mighty puff, Thomas broke free. Hooray, tooted Thomas! But Thomas didn't know the ropes holding the sails had untied. Thomas was feeling very grand now. The wind was strong. It was blowing him along. Whee! Thomas cried happily. He was going faster and faster. The wind grew stronger. Thomas raced around a bend. Be careful, Thomas, Molly tooted. The wind is filling the boat's sails. But Thomas wished by so quickly he didn't hear her. The mayor, the fat controller, and Lady Hack were waiting at the harbour. They could see Thomas racing towards them. Slow down, Thomas, boomed the fat controller. But Thomas couldn't slow down. Thomas whooshed past and raced away from them. Faster and faster, around a bend in the track. Suddenly the wind dropped and Thomas stopped. If the wind picks up again, I'll never be able to stop at the harbour, he cried. The boat will not be launched and the mayor and the fat controller will be very cross. Thomas knew then that he had been wrong not to wait for the engineer at the docks. I must chuff back to the docks as quickly as I can and I must bring the engineer to lower the masts, he tooted. Thomas was uncoupled from the flatbed and he steamed off. Thomas's wheels whirred to a stop at the docks. Has the engineer arrived, Salty? puffed Thomas. Oh, yes, me hearty, smiled Salty. Thomas was very relieved. The engineer climbed quickly into Thomas's cab and Thomas steamed off. Soon, Thomas arrived at the sailing boat. The engineer rolled the sails and lowered the masts. Slowly, Thomas chuffed back to the harbour. The boat was heavy. Thomas had to puff hard. This time, the wind couldn't help him. The mayor, the fat controller and Lady Hat were still waiting. They were happy to see Thomas and they were happy to see the mayor's sailing boat. Thomas, I see you have decided that full steam is better than full sail. Yes, sir, tooted Thomas. And as he watched the boat slide into the water, Thomas was very proud to be really useful. Gordon and the Engineer There are railway lines all over the island of Sodor. The railway runs from Brendam Docks right across the countryside. So there are lots of signals. They help the engines to stay safe as they go about their work. All the engines have favourite jobs. Gordon loves pulling the express. Gordon thinks it's the most important job on the island. And Gordon likes to feel important. 
One morning, the Fat Controller came to see Gordon. Gordon, the points are broken, said the Fat Controller. An important engineer is coming to fix them. You are to collect him at Marin Station. Then you must take him to the points as quickly as possible. Don't worry, sir, chuffed Gordon. I'll get him to the points for you. Gordon steamed to Marin. All the other engines were stuck. They couldn't go anywhere until the points were fixed. They all had to wait as Gordon puffed grandly along the express line. I'm an important engine collecting an important passenger, he puffed proudly. Gordon felt very grand. Gordon pulled in to Marin Station. There was a passenger carrying a toolbox waiting on the platform. He must be the important engineer, thought Gordon. All aboard, he whistled, and the man with the toolbox climbed on board. Wait! said the station master. Bertie the bus is bringing more passengers. I can't wait, Gordon huffed. I have a very important passenger on board. I have to leave now. And he left. Gordon puffed proudly along. But he didn't know that the man with the toolbox wasn't the engineer or that Bertie the bus had brought the engineer with all the other passengers. Oh no, groaned the engineer, I've missed my train. How will I ever fix the points now? Gordon rattled past Donald. Then he clattered past Douglas. Important engine coming through, chuffed Gordon. This made Douglas very cross. But the man with the toolbox was having a wonderful time. He was the only passenger and he didn't have to stop at any of the stations. At last, Gordon arrived at the broken points. I'm glad you're here, puffed Thomas. None of the engines can move until the points are fixed. But the man with the toolbox was very confused. I'm not an engineer said the man. I'm a carpenter. I thought Gordon was taking me to the docks. Oh, no! I've left the engineer behind, moaned Gordon. I'll have to go back and get him. But you can't reverse down the express line with the express, said the signalman. Maybe you could go on my line, puffed Thomas. That's a good idea, puffed Gordon. Thank you, Thomas. So Gordon backed down the line and left his express coaches. Then he steamed on to Thomas's track. He reversed quickly down Thomas's line. But he found Douglas blocking his way. Out of my way, huffed Gordon. I've got an important passenger to collect. You can't get past, puffed Douglas. I can only go back as far as the next station, then Donald is in the way. Gordon felt terrible. All the engines were stuck and it was all his fault. How can I collect the engineer, he puffed. Then Gordon had an idea. Maybe all the engines can help, he thought. Gordon told Douglas his idea. Then Douglas puffed down the track to tell Donald. What a grand plan, chuffed Donald. So Donald puffed back to collect the engineer. The engineer climbed on board.
then Donald chuffed back up the line. Donald dropped the engineer off at the station. Then Douglas took the engineer to the next stop where Gordon was waiting for him. Finally, Gordon took the engineer to the broken points. The points were soon fixed and the engines could puff through. Thank you, Gordon, puffed Thomas. That evening, the railway was back to normal. Thank you for helping me today, puffed Gordon. Even an important engine like me needs help, sometimes. Hide and peep. Brendam Docks is a busy, bustling place. There are platforms, tracks and sidings and lots and lots of big warehouses. Everyone enjoys working at Brendam Docks. One day, Thomas, Percy and Cranky were all waiting for an important cargo ship to arrive. Cranky could see that the ship was far away on the horizon. The ship will be late, he told Thomas and Percy. Thomas had an idea. Let's play a game while we wait he puffed cheerfully. What shall we play? peeped Percy excitedly. Hide and peep, tooted Thomas. It was his favourite game. You go and hide, Percy, and when I find you, I will peep loudly. You'll never find me, puffed Percy. I'm the best hider ever. Well, I'm the best finder, boasted Thomas. Cranky looked down at the little tank engines can I play? he asked. You're much too tall to hide, Thomas laughed. Cranky felt left out. So Percy puffed away to hide. Soon, Thomas steamed off to find his friend. Thomas puffed past platforms, steamed by sidings, and wished alongside warehouses. But Percy was very good at hiding. Thomas couldn't find him anywhere. Thomas puffed into a large warehouse. He thought Percy might be hiding there. When he got inside, he couldn't see him. Suddenly, an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. He decided he would play a trick. Thomas pretended he knew where Percy was hiding, even though he didn't. Found you, peeped Thomas loudly. Then he looked all around to see where Percy was hiding. Percy puffed out of his hiding place. Percy could see that Thomas hadn't really found him at all. Percy whistled loudly. Thomas was surprised. You tricked me, Percy puffed crossly. You didn't know where I was at all. Thomas felt silly. I'm sorry, he wished. I lied again, huffed Percy, but no more tricks, and he chuffed quickly away. Thomas waited, then he steamed off to look for Percy again. But Percy was very good at hiding, and Thomas couldn't find him anywhere. Bother, huffed Thomas. Suddenly another idea flew into Thomas's funnel. I'll pretend that the fact controller has arrived. Percy, tooted Thomas loudly. The fact controller's here. But the fact controller wasn't really there at all. Suddenly, there was a loud noise. Percy had been hiding at the top of the coal hopper. Thomas was surprised. Bosh my boiler, puffed Percy. Where is he, Thomas? But Percy couldn't see the fat controller anywhere. Found you, peeped Thomas cheekily. Percy saw that Thomas had tricked him again. That's not fair, he wished. I'm sorry, Thomas chuffed. Hide again. This time I won't trick you. 
So Percy puffed away to hide again. Thomas waited. Then he started to look for his friend. Thomas still couldn't find him, but he did find the dock manager. The dock manager was also looking for Percy and for Thomas. The ship is docked and Cranky is unloading the cargo. You must come and collect your deliveries, he told Thomas. Thomas peeped loudly for Percy. Percy, the ship has docked, he tooted. Percy heard Thomas, but he thought it was another trick, so Percy decided to stay hidden. Cinders and ashes, cried Thomas. Percy thinks I'm playing another trick. Percy would be in trouble if he didn't collect his cargo trucks. If only I hadn't tricked Percy before, tooted Thomas. He raced over to Cranky. Where's Percy? cranked Cranky crankily. Percy is still hiding. I'm not a very good finder after all, Thomas wished sadly. And I'm too tall to be a good hider, creaked Cranky. Thomas remembered that Cranky was so tall he had seen the cargo ship far out at sea. But you'd be a very good finder, tooted Thomas. Thomas asked Cranky to see if he could find where Percy was hiding. Or Percy will get into trouble, puffed Thomas. Cranky didn't want the little engines to get into trouble. Cranky looked easily over warehouses, across platforms and down onto sidings. And there he saw Percy. I found him, cranked Cranky proudly. Thomas raced over to Rocky. Found you, Percy, he peeped loudly. Rattle my rods, puffed Percy. He was very surprised. You were the best finder after all. No, I'm not, Thomas puffed sadly. I had to ask Cranky to find you. He's so tall he could see where you were hiding. You tricked me again, huffed Percy. Before Percy could get cross, Thomas told him about the waiting cargo trucks. It's time for our deliveries, Thomas whistled. We must hurry. Together, Percy and Thomas steamed back to their cargo trucks. Percy was happy his friend had found him. Soon they were ready to leave. Thank you, Cranky, Thomas chuffed loudly. You are the best finder. Cranky was very pleased. And Percy, Thomas puffed to his friend, you are the best hider ever. And the two friends steamed happily away.